back to the channel. How you doing? How's your mama now? Shane's got a grocery haul to show y'all. We went to the cheap place. Cause sometimes I just get wild hair and I just quit feeling like spending a fortune at Walmart. So we go to somewhere called Priceless where the prices are less. <laughs> it's time for that moment you've been waiting for. Grocery haul time, baby. Come on! So here we are with the new grocery haul. I know, I know. There's been loads of requests saying, where's my awesomely created grocery haul? You know what? Fearful Created, AKA Reenie Baby, heard y'all's please. And she said, you know what? We need to give the people what they want. So here we are. Here we go. What's up girl, I love you. We're gonna go over what we got here. First things first, we got this big old thing of Smithfield fully cooked bacon. Uh, this is the stuff that like you can microwave. It's actually pretty good, not gonna lie. We got us a box of deluxe yellow cake mix. I like that and what it means for my foreseeable future. We got a pack or a box of pancake and waffle mix along with a bag of sugar. We got a little baby bag of baby cut carrots along with some white rice. Right here, we've got some fancy shredded triple cheddar cheese. You know it, you love it. Totino's party pizza. I've always called them Tostino's, but apparently they are Totino's. Thanks, Mandela Effect. We've got two packs of these English muffins, along with a good old box of ramen. Right here, we've got sirloin tip roast boneless, which needed to be sold by January 30th, 24, at the price of seven. Okay, I can't do that. We've got some roast here, cannot wait. Uh, roast is my weakness. Everybody knows this, Nan knows this. She cooks me a roast every now and then. I love roast. Rini got some of these baked scallop taters. I guess we should give this a hashtag tater nation. So hashtag scallop tater nation. For my request, I wanted to get these roasted garlic and rosemary taters because these things look so good. And I saw that and I was like, oh, I'm hungry for those. So another hashtag tater nation. We got us two things of this white bread here, along with a single pack of hamburger buns. We've got a pack of shredded mild cheddar cheese, along with two boxes of mac and cheese, a can of golden hominy, and a new thing of iodized salt, which we were definitely running low on. Kinder Bueno Crispy Creamy Chocolate Bars. So this is, I know the kids love Kinder, so I'm assuming it's the same as a Kinder Egg, along with a pack of glazed donut sticks. Man, you know what this makes me think of? Uh, McDonald's needs to bring back their donut sticks. You guys remember those? Those were good. We've got some Brillo Basics dishwashing liquid soap. Can't see this. Actually, you can see this because Rena got a really good deal. She got three of these for like 13 bucks at the DG. So I guess you guys can see that this week. Uh, we got us a thing of chocolate frosting along with a box of vanilla instant pudding and French vanilla instant pudding. Oh, what's up, girl? We got two bags of our doggy food here. This is for Binks, Tater, Moon Pie, and Bluey. Rocky eats a different kind. We also got two bell peppers. <laughs> Nobody can see it. We can. <laughs> well, then you're blessed. <laughs> we got a gallon of milk and we also we stocked up on uh, cereal so that it can last us for a couple weeks and everybody kind of picked out their own so we've got some choco dino bites which is basically cocoa puffs the berry colossal crunch which what are these supposed to be mama what? the berry colossal captain punch crunch. oh captain crunch They didn't have the off-brand for Reese's Puffs, uh, which one of the kiddos wanted this, so we just went ahead and got this one. Those cereals are per child, and they are to last for two weeks. I'm offended. Per child, and we all know I picked one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we got some frosted. That's last year for two weeks. We've got some frosted flakes. Which how do they get away with calling them frosted flakes? Mm. Huh. And then I picked these out. Apple zings. We got a bag of wavy potato chips. Colton wanted some of this baked three cheese potato casserole, so we got that. You know it. You love it. Say it with me. Hashtag Tater Nation. <laughs> Creamy caramel filled candies. Two boxes of hamburger helper. And this time we've got the deluxe cheeseburger macaroni kind. As well as the two boxes of stuff that I'm always happy about when I see it because it always means casseroles are on the horizon. Got a big old thing of Prego meat sauce. As well as a big old thing of applesauce. We got a bag of barbecue tater chips. Oh, Rena, that's why. Yeah. So we came across these Oreos and these Oreos were super duper expensive. And I kept trying to want, I kept trying to figure out why these were, you got the mega stuffed. That's still shit. I mean, that's still a lot for them. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but you got the mega stuff. I feel ashamed for you to pay that. Got two boxes of the Sket as well as two packs of chocolate chip cookies, a bag of shredded hash brown potatoes. We actually got more mac and cheese, so actually four boxes. We've got a pack of bologna. We actually had to discard this because we didn't realize it had brown and black spots all over the side of it, and we were not about to try that. We got two boxes of the deluxe mac and cheese, two boxes of these saltine crackers, another can of Golden Harmony, so two of those, a can of Manwich, uh, I actually threw this into the buggy, <laughs> a thing of taco sauce, the mild kind, and then two packs of these burrito sized flour to tortillas. And as you can see it, that right there is our grocery haul for this week. Actually, I think we're gonna try to stretch it for two weeks. It'll be totally doable because we have a crap ton of meat in the freezer. That will be stretched for two weeks. Did you say your come on? Yeah, I said my come on. I'm gonna say my come on. They were asking for that. Yeah, I gotta say it. But I'm going to now turn it back over to my lovely wife. I will see you guys soon. Cause we got a cool video coming up. You're looking at me thinking about whether you should tell them what it is or not. I'm not gonna tell them what it is. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Farmer Marina reporting for duty in my chair jammies this morning.
a ton out here. I got some junk going on though, but it's not like, I don't feel like bad. It's just I got junk going on. My chickens are free roaming chickens, so they won't go nowhere. As long as Moon Pie's out here, she herds them to keep them near the coop, but she never goes inside the coop. I just knew it was gonna be blue jeans. But blue jeans tries to pluck their tail feathers every time she's out here. So if I'm dealing with the chickens, she's gotta be inside. Binks and Tater like to hunt them for a sport, so they've also <laughs> gotta be put up. Rocky doesn't care, really. He could care less. Uh, but Moon Pie's very engaged with them, and she does a really good job at herding, even though we've never taught her to herd. I guess it's just her instincts where she's a toy Australian Shepherd. They're the size of something that she can herd. They are free roaming chickens and I haven't ever had a problem with that. We are actually going to do a, whoa! We are actually gonna do a chicken mansion makeover soon. If you follow me over on Instagram, you saw me fix their bedding in here in a new way. They've been in here for a little bit, but I started putting tarps underneath their bedding so the floor wouldn't get as messy and I wouldn't have to scrub the floor too often because then the it takes forever for the wood to dry out so that I can put more stuff on it. It's nowhere near done. This is just their house to keep them safe at night and it still needs nesting boxes because here in a few months they'll begin to lay eggs. Silky chickens are a little bit different. They lay eggs later, um, like usually seven seven to nine months. And they're not big eggers either. They don't lay a whole lot of eggs. They're just domesticated chickens and they're fun to have <laughs> around. <laughs> These chickens are really our pets. We didn't get them for any other purpose than that. If they give eggs, they give eggs. If they don't, they don't. It's not their purpose here. I would like to, now that I have my hand with some chickens, these are the first chickens I ever got. I actually got 20, I think. I ordered a pack of 20 newly born chicks and I gave a bunch to my cable guy. I gave some to friends. I traded some for a chicken coop over here bartering chickens. <laughs> but I had to get 20 in order to get that shipment here because I wanted white silky chicks. So in order to get all white silky chicks, I had to order them in bulk because that's what chickeneries or whatever you call them. Hatcheries, that's what hatcheries do. They have you order them all in bulk. I just gave mine to friends and if somebody was over here doing my uh, cable like they were, I tipped them in chickens. Now that I have experience with those chickens though, and I know what I'm doing and I've raised chickens and they've become very, really good family pets. And I know kind of the ins and outs because these were my trial chickens and I actually did not lose any from that original bunch. I did not lose any until we had a massive windstorm come by and if you've been here for a little bit even you've seen the video where we lost two of them and we buried them down there they're in the corner of my yard over there but as far as me caring for them they all thrived up until that windstorm so I lost two and now I have 11 because I kept 13 and now I have 11 and 13 is very ambitious for a first-time chicken owner <laughs> but we made it happen now that I know what I'm doing though I'm probably gonna get some eggers maybe some Americanas something like that Easter eggers uh, for the purpose of being pets and laying eggs. Whatever animal I have, I don't care if it's a daggone alligator, it would end up being a pet because I just can't do like just working animals. But we plan on this whole back area right here. You know what, I haven't told you all the plans of the land, have I? I think I, on my tour video, when we first bought this double lot, I think I showed you guys the land and gave you kind of like a brief summary of what I wanted to do. But I haven't told you what's in the plans, actual plans. Revamp this building into a chicken mansion so it needs roosting areas nesting boxes um i want to have it's very good size actually i want to just make it really 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 pretty in here for them so that they can be comfortable in here when they're up at night i'm also going to do a door back here leading out to the back area and a couple of windows for ventilation purposes and the door that's out here is going to be right here and i'm having a big old it's like nine by six i think wire chicken coop i was going to have that delivered but then I don't know if we're gonna do the ones that you get from Amazon. They're like 130 bucks. I don't know if we're gonna do that or if we're gonna do a DIY one because I do have a DIY magician who runs away from stuff like that, but he has a soft spot for me, so it usually happens if I want it to happen. Well, I don't know though. Yeah, I haven't consulted the DIY master, so I don't know. I can't say that we will do a DIY, but I hope that we do. That's gonna lead out here about, I guess, six, nine feet, something or another. It'll be pretty large. I'm getting a second one of these for the other set of chickens because I think that uh, 11 in here is the perfect amount. It's not too claustrophobic and if we added any more I would be afraid they wouldn't have enough room. So I'm gonna get another one of those Leonard sheds, turn it into another chicken coop. I need to go help one of the kiddos with something real quick. Hold on. Oh I think I'm thinking I should have rethought my attire for today. Anyways this building right here that has the trough in front of it that's gonna be Drum roll, the miniature pony stable. <laughs> Ponies are herd like animals, so we'll probably have two. If that's big enough for a miniature pony, uh, we measured it, it's big enough for a miniature pony. And this entire back that you see behind me is gonna be completely 
fancy. So all along this tree line right here, all along that tree line right there, all along that tree line right there, every bit of open pasture is going to be fenced in for the ponies. My silkies, some laying chickens and ponies are what's gonna be up here. This is the part of the house that we call the Forest of Valor. From, uh, is that from Frozen? What? Forest of Valor? Frozen, Lord of the Rings or something. This is an area I cannot touch per Shane. Uh, La Florian Forest, I think is what he calls it. Cannot touch that per Shane. He's gonna do something with fairy lights in there or something. So past this little forested area, there's an open pasture again, and then another forested area. That's for the goats. I'm not gonna have a whole lot of goats. I just wanna try my hand at goat milk. The rest of this backyard area, which is all the backyard where like the trampoline is and stuff like that, down to the driveway and the house, and then all of the front yard and the side yard are gonna be for the dogs, the kids, and us. It's kind of going to be our just whatever area. I want them designated to particular areas so that it's not all over the yard. I don't just have goats and ponies roaming. <laughs> so the portions of it that are not fenced off that are pastures for the farm animals, we're going to have a privacy fence around for us and the dogs. We're going to start the privacy fence this spring. Hopefully have that done pretty quickly. The good thing is, is we're kind of on like this Mount Sinai thing. I can see everybody but only if you can see me type of thing. But to keep the dogs contained and the kids safe and everything, we're gonna do the privacy fence all the way around. I have these things right here to put on their legs so I can identify them. I do not ever use the red because chickens will peck anything that resembles blood. A lot of times if there's a hurt chicken in the coop, they'll peck it to get it out of there. So I never, ever, ever use the red, but I do like to use the other colors. Cause they're all white, but really we can tell the difference between all of them. I have one on my favorite i'm not supposed to have favorites but it, i just love it i named it georgie after my papa every time i restock kimmy's backpack i try to show you guys what i put in here because i get so many comments talking about how it helps some of you guys so much sometimes y'all have to remind me <laughs> what y'all did this time it isn't always stuff educational sometimes it's just i need this to grab your attention for a really long time or i need this to direct your attention into a different direction this is just a bag of this is a bag of what ifs. What if I need something right now? What if he wants to do something right now? What if we're somewhere quiet and it needs to be quiet? What if we're somewhere crowded and he needs his attention redirected? Whether it be for those reasons or just because he needs to be occupied, that's what this bag is for, nothing more. I have fun stuff in here. Sometimes I have educational stuff in here, but let's be real. He's 12, he wants fun stuff. <laughs> I'm excited because he knows this is his bag. I used to keep everything in a drawstring bag, but it's just not big enough. The drawstring bag is not big enough anymore. So I got him this little backpack at the dollar store, Dollar General, for five bucks. He don't need no Prada. He don't need no genuine leather or anything. He could care less whether it is Gucci or not. <laughs> he likes the color blue these days, so it has blue on it. He's fine with it. Let me show you what I got in there this month. Cause I try to restock it monthly. Sometimes I have to restock it more often than that, depending on how many appointments we have that week, things like that. Sometimes I have to restock it more frequently than once a month, but it averages out to about once a month that I have to restock it. I don't spend a fortune or an arm and a leg to restock it. I just find things that I know Kimmy likes or things that I think Kimmy will like and I stick it in there. This first batch is from Kohl's, and I usually don't get anything from Kohl's because Kohl's prices are whack, but I was in there looking for Selena Gomez's Rare Beauty Beauty line, and I happened across the toy aisle like I do in every store, and I found these, which are lifesavers. They're literally glitter blocks, and you play with them and build with them. They're perfect for a bag like this. They're more building tiles instead of blocks. So like they're little magnetic tiles. They're perfect for this bag. I also found this little cute packet of like these little ramen noodle string like things that you can play with. They were $4 and that's kind of pricey. I think they were on clearance for $4. That's kind of pricey, but Cammy loves ramen noodles. Ramen noodles, everything. It's his favorite meal. If he could eat ramen noodles every single day, he would. So this isn't something that's gonna keep his attention, but something he can just hang out with and play with. It's not one of those code red things. This, however, is one of those code red things. I found these little scratch and scribbles. Anything artistic is gonna keep his attention for a really long time. So these have little black pieces of things in it that you can scratch off with a pencil lock thing that comes with it. And it's colorful and then you can make little designs. I'm not just saying this cause he's my child. The kid is a phenomenal artist, so he loves stuff like this. I also found these little Legos in the case we need something to keep him occupied for a very long time. You can actually make three different animals with this pack. So you can make 
a, I think you can make a penguin, you can make a panda bear, and another animal as well. So Legos in general, it takes some time to build those, but this one in particular, you can do a three in one. So you have this set of Legos and it can make three different things. So it can occupy someone for three times as long as just a regular set of Legos. Anytime I can find anything artistic related that's compact, I always grab it. So this has a little roll of coloring sheets in it and a couple of crowns. It can all be compacted into this little big green crown thing though. So I always look for stuff like this because it's not big. You don't have to lug it around. You can take it out at restaurants, take it out wherever you need to be, and you can literally just color on the rolls of coloring paper and not worry about carrying a big old coloring book like this but sometimes this big old coloring book will come in handy. I picked up this coloring book and the following stuff at the DG. This coloring book was a dollar and then I picked up this dry erase board. I always try to pick up these. They come in handy as well and I like to get the ones with the attached marker and the eraser on the marker. It just makes it easier. Also these little, not the big old subject spiral notebooks, but the little spiral notebooks, I love carrying those around. There is always some sort of candy in the bag, always. And these ring pops are the tongue painter ones. Ones. I got them in the Valentine's Day section at the DG and it comes with like cherry, strawberry, Camilo's, all those flavors and they're kind of festive because they're Valentine's Day. So I picked up these and then I picked up some extra markers for the dry erase board just in case the ink runs out or the marker runs out of the black marker attached to the board. We have this extra black, blue, and red marker and I specifically get the ones with the erasers attached to them because nobody wants to lug around a big old expo eraser. <laughs> I don't usually do slime but for cami i will do slime this is the kind of slime where it has like little pieces of styrofoam balls in it it's like a sensory sort of thing sometimes but i just like to get whatever kind of slime i liked this one in particular because on the back it had something else that would get your attention and it's like a little number you know a dot to dot dot to dot it's a little dot to dot so this was a double whammy and i got it these are his favorites like ever his if you could if he could eat one thing for the rest of his life it would be the gummy crabby patty candy <laughs> i'm telling you so when i found these on a stick in the valentine's day section at dollar general i had to pick them up i always get pins always because the pins either go missing they run away they hide or something but i always get new ones almost monthly to put in there i usually get the gel pens one because that's just the ones that he likes in particular i also get fine tip markers i try to have some sort of marker in there at all times in case he wants to get out his little spiral notebook and do marker paintings or marker pictures in there this is the big thing. So this is the big daddy. <laughs> so this is a code like we need something right now and we need it right now. <laughs> this is like sand, Play-Doh sand. And it's just something that's going to keep your attention for a while because all the different textures and stuff. And it has two different types of textures in it. So that's even better. And then I got some gummy bears, which is Cameron's. Well, gummy bears are tied with Krabby Patties to him. I got the Valentine's Day edition. It's the red and white ones. He'll eat any kind of gummy bear. If it comes in the Haribo package, he grabs for it every single time at the the grocery store when we're in line he will grab for the Haribo gold bears every single time last thing I picked up was just some jumbo crayons and I just like the jumbo ones because they're bigger and then there's not a whole lot of them there's just eight so there's not a lot of them that can go missing or run away <laughs> any other amount like we lose half of them <laughs> I try to always rotate it out so that there's not the same things every single month but it almost always has candy in it specifically it almost always has gummy bears in it because that's his favorite but other things I try to get new things so it doesn't get mundane and what is it called monotonous is that the right word monotonous doesn't get monotonous for him <laughs> Okay, I'm in. I need to do these dishes here. Oh, by the way, thank you. I can't. Be re I cannot remember your name. I would know your face if I saw it, but I cannot remember your, like your icon if I saw it. I cannot remember your name, but I want to say thank you for dropping the info in the last video, I believe. I was struggling with my laundry, and you said that you literally, the way that you conquered your laundry journey and your laundry issues is you just had everybody throw their dirty clothes inside the washer. You said you basically skipped the hamper or the basket stage itself and you just had everybody put their dirty clothes into the laundry as soon as they took them off that evening and then i guess ran that load that night i don't know if i've ever got that advice before i can't remember i have issues with my memory cannot remember if i've got that advice before but this is the first time i've tried to really implement that i guess you could say that i'm aware of because I, I can't remember what happened yesterday <laughs> i have this brain issue it's a whole thing i tell it every now and then this ain't a time that i'm gonna tell it though but i have a legitimate brain issue to where i cannot remember nothing squat zilch nothing it messed with my my short-term memory is just shot long-term memory sort of is too <laughs> but i can't remember if i've tried it before but i can say i haven't ever 
implemented it the way that I am right now and that is saving me so much hassle I want to thank you I cannot find your comment to thank you I was literally looking for it to try and thank you and I cannot find it so I wanted to go in here and break the broadcast and say thank you because that was such a genius idea now I know it's not for the people who do the sorting and that you guys are superheroes in the laundry department laundry superheroes laundromat superheroes I know that y'all are sorting and we're supposed to be doing all that stuff but I don't sort on a regular day like even, even on a good day I don't sort I probably should um, I've tried before and I've gotten into it a little bit and then I just revert back to my laundry pile being full and my main mission is just to get the laundry under control not the laundry sorted so I'm trying to just tackle the issues I deal with that are more major issues and it's like sorting or getting the laundry done. Getting laundry done is my biggest thing, all right? So instead of letting it sit in a hamper and the pile grow, 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 I've just been throwing it, tossing it right in the washer and then washing it when it gets full. That is so smart, like so stinking smart. If you struggle with laundry, try that like try do me a favor and just try that it's not for everybody i know that some people really like sorting i wish i could be like you we're trying to get like you my boy but right now i'm not like you and i just need and i just need to get it done and hopefully one day i'll be like you I, I'll, I'll take all the prayers all the luck and all this stuff somebody said there's no way uh i, I read see i read the comments even if i don't heart them anymore because oftentimes shane will read them to me in the evenings or i'll go through and i'll read them on my tablet and my tablet's rarely ever like it's like, like incognito so i it's not, i'm not ever on my account to heart it but i read so many of the comments and i think i might have got back to that one but somebody said like it's super unrealistic for you to think you're gonna have a clean house with four kids and five dogs but good luck though and i was like thank you for the luck that's what i need prayers over luck but thank you for the good luck wishes i realize it's a very unrealistic task that i have tasked myself with but you know i don't think that i have to keep it spotless i don't think i have to keep it squeaky clean but i would like to keep it just clean like you know i don't want to step on crumbs when i'm walking through the house like crumbs are okay but i don't want to step on whole like fruit loop wrappers in the floor <laughs> when i'm walking through the house dog hair doesn't bother me so that's irrelevant and dog hair is basically my second skin i'll just say it keeps me warm at night <laughs> like that the dog hair don't bother me but i will say i love comments like that because i, I felt the genuine good luck like it wasn't a good luck though like it might have been but i took it as good luck though <laughs> so i appreciate those comments i appreciate even more when you guys are like listen prayers <laughs> sit your way you can tell me listen i'm not one of them youtubers where you can't tell me how you feel you can tell me how you feel you can hurt my feelings it's gonna be okay you can try to hurt my feelings. My feelings are easily hurtable. But you can try to hurt my feelings. That's okay. Like, I, I'll i be your punching bag for the night if you need me to be. I don't delete comments. I have moderators that delete comments. I actually had to get rid of a couple of them um, that I recently put on the thing because they were just, they were um, deleting comments that they weren't really rude, but they weren't really nice. It was kind of just neutral. And I don't want comments like that deleted. I don't want comments that disagree with me deleted like the only comments i deem bad enough to be deleted are comments that are a either being straight out mean vulgar or disrespectful um to my people because i've had conversations like this with you guys before where i've asked you hey do the comments bother you so the comments don't bother me i don't want to delete them and you guys have came back and said please like this is our experience watching your videos this is our experience in the comments we don't want to deal with that we don't want to see that so i for the sake of those people who don't want to see that stuff like when people start complaining that it's taken away from their experience and it's kind of like putting a damper on their experience then that's when i have a problem with it but as far as like negative, I don't see the point, right? I don't see the point in deleting my comments just for me. Like for you guys, I will. I'll delete the comments for y'all who don't want to see it in the comments. I'll have them deleted, I should say. For me, I don't see the point in deleting negative comments because they're already out there in the universe, right? Universe, I guess you could say. The person feels that way. I can't change that. They're just voicing that they feel that way. Me deleting it doesn't take away the fact that they feel that way. <laughs> That's why I, I, I don't go huge on deleting comments. I never have. It's just because I can't change anything by deleting it. It's just not there anymore for me to see. And I, and I can give a big old fart as to what people think of me. I think that's pretty obvious with me being who I am on the internet. If I really cared any bit at all, I probably would not be here. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is I don't. I don't. I let it roll right off my bat, like water off a of duck's feathers. And a lot of times I try to find some positivity in there. Like what was one? 
Fearfully created is a cow. So you think I'm fearfully created though. <laughs> I ignore the hoe is a cow. So you think I'm fearfully created. <laughs> I don't even know how we got here. I have no idea how we got here. All that to say, thank you to the person who suggested throwing the clothes right into the washer because that works for right now. Matter of fact, before we get started on dinner, let's go ahead and start that load that's in the washer right now so that can be going while we're doing dinner. I've been using this Purex, the green kind. It's the natural elements dye free kind. I don't know how healthy it is, but look at this. Look, you see how watery it is? That makes me feel better knowing that I'm not like putting jelly-like stuff in here. It's super like liquidy and usually detergents are not liquidy like that. So it makes me feel better knowing that it's liquidy because I'm thinking it don't have jelly in it or something. Because I'm thinking the jelly factors could be the harmful factors. I don't know. I'm no scientist. I've also been using this Suavitel stuff which I forgot how much I loved this stuff. I used to use this religiously. And then I went to Downy, and don't get me wrong, I love my Downy. I love my Downy scent beads, my fabric softener, love Downy. But this stuff, I had, I had to hog a loogie before I could smell it. Yeah, this stuff, yeah, I mean, dare I say, I'm not going to say it. Am I going to say it? No, I've got a bottle of Downy softener looking right at me. I can't disrespect it like that. It might smell just a little bit better. You didn't hear that from me though. And then I haven't been putting scent beads in there because I find that I don't really need them with that Suavitel. Suavitel doesn't have scent beads, I don't think. But even if they did, I wouldn't need them because that Suavitel smells up your clothes and they smell for a while. Like they smell good for a while. Even just hanging in the closet, they smell good. I'm gonna wash this load for 55 minutes. By then, dinner should be on its way to being done. Today in the Fearfully Created House, we are having meatloaf. Cue the kids in the background. Oh, Two of my kids love it. Two of my kids don't. They tolerate it, but they don't love it. But we haven't had it in a while, and Shane likes it. I like it. So I'm going to make it. It's easy. I make it the way Nanny makes it. I try to remember the way that she makes it. And I don't remember how long I should cook it for. Let me go grab my phone. How long do I cook meatloaf to avoid getting salmonella? So I'm going to do it about 350 I'm gonna cook it for about an hour and a half just to avoid the salmonella. It probably will be done at an hour, but better to safe than sorry. Got a pink bowl. Well, this is actually Nanny's. I need to give it back to her. I think this is one that I gave her. Pretty sure, because I know I gave her a set of mixing bowls. And I wish I had got me some, because it's so pretty. It's more like pepto bismol -y in person. And then I have been thawing out my meat all day long. Got about a pound and a half in here. Speaking of dog hair, I think I have some in my mouth. Got my meat in there. Got me an egg here. Are these bad? I was actually in my 20s when I learned that most people use breadcrumbs. But Nanny has always used crackers. So that's what I use. I don't think she uses a whole sleeve. Let's do that much. I still got about, I'd say, a fourth in there. We're gonna do a big old squirt of ketchup. <laughs> that much. <laughs> Would you know I have no idea where my tomato paste is? Oh, snap. I have no idea where that's at. Oh, ah, no! I have diced tomatoes. We also have tomato paste. I'm gonna go get Shane's ladder. <laughs> Help us on the way, dear. Oh no. Oh wait, maybe. Yeah. I N D E P E E N D. I still can't spell that right. <laughs> you thought you, you thought you could run? All that work for that little bit of kid. You know, it don't smell the greatest when it's in this form, but when it's in the other form, it smells better. I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to add some pepper. And let's hope I have onions in the fridge because I don't remember. Do y'all need to clean out your fridge? 
If you do, I may hang tight and wait till so I can film and clean up my fridge y'all. Cleaning is just better when you do it together. I'm thinking that I might make homemade mashed taters because meatloaf is better with mashed taters and I know that my kiddos will be happy about that because they love mashed taters, homemade ones. Believe it or not, I can throw down on some homemade mashed taters. Like I wholeheartedly believe Gordon Ramsay could walk up in here and he would rave about my mashed taters. Call that confidence, call that delusion. Um, but I really do believe that. I really don't believe he'd call me an idiot sandwich. Or a donut. If I need to get me a cutting board, we're gonna cut these things. Pollution from property in Arizona. Let me rinse these off. From my front porch, you can see the sea. I got some pollution from property in Arizona. If you'll buy that, I'll throw the golden bread in free. Oh, 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 so I had a topper. Oh my gosh, it just broke my heart. I had a topper from one of y'all, and it was the same color as this. Oh my gosh, it you pulled a string and it chopped. I cherished that thing. And when we moved here, I know I saw it in the cabinets, and I cannot find it anywhere. And I'm probably gonna find it whenever we rip these cabinets out and put new ones in. But I'm devastated for the time being because I love that thing. Not because it was just a good thing, but it was also from one of you guys. Like, I cherish, like, listen, I have candles. Like, this was one from one of you guys. This one. I have candles from you guys that I have used completely. And they're in, like, this little memory treasure box. That's, is it off the chain? Probably. But I can't bring myself to throw it away. I'm always, like, I could honor them by, like, making my own wax one day. And like making it a hobby to do candle wax, maybe soy wax or something, and putting it in those candles. Will I ever do that? I don't know. I always have big ideas. But I might one day. So I don't ever want to throw it away. about half that onion because it's pretty potent now my nanny gets in there and gets her hands dirty but I'm a millennial <laughs> if I can do it this way without getting dirty then I'm gonna do it this way I don't know I don't I don't know if I've ever done it this way or not usually I get my hands dirty sometimes I put big giant glad bags on my hands and we'll mash it up like that. And put a little olive oil in the bottom. I've got my cabinets up there packed with so much that I don't even know what I have right now because I'm lacking so, I'm lacking so much space. I'm questioning if I like meatloaf at this point. <laughs> don't that just look? Mm-hmm. Let's flatten it out a little bit more. I like to have mine sort of like in a circle because it cooks more through that way, in my opinion. Right now it kind of looks like an ornament or something. I know that some people do barbecue on top of theirs. I learned that when I first started YouTube. I do ketchup and I do a hefty layer of ketchup on top. Kind of hides the fact that it's meatloaf. That might be why I like it so much. You can't really tell it's meatloaf. It kind of just looks like a ketchup souffle or something. All right, I'm gonna pop this in the oven for about an hour and a half on 350. And then am I really going to make homemade mashed potatoes? Yeah, I probably will. I probably will, yeah. Right, we're running way behind if we're gonna make homemade mashed taters. I was letting the meatloaf chill in the oven for a little bit because I had to cook it for an hour and a half. And I was like, oh, I have plenty of time to get the mashed potatoes started. I'm gonna sit down and edit. Well, I've been editing for 45 minutes and only have a minute and like 48 seconds of footage. <laughs> but when I'm editing, I'm like in the zone. So I completely forgot I had a meatloaf going and now we got eight minutes left on the meatloaf and I got no taters. So we better get the mashed taters done. Cause I feel like the taters are my white flag when it comes to the kids and asking them to eat um, meatloaf. I feel like the white flag, you hear, if you hear apples and bananas in the background, that's Cammie's jam right now. He loves that song. I 
I need to disinfect the countertops real quick before I start peeling the taters on here. Especially with me just slinging meatloaf around. Let's get to peeling taters, my least favorite part. Usually, I can talk Colton into doing this for me, but Colton's hanging out with his friends, so it's on me today. to plop them in here get my milk and butter handy and my salt because stuff gets wild whenever it's mixing you gotta hurry and, do, 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 and you don't want to go looking for the salt or the milk and butter the milk i'm using a whole stick of butter because there's a lot of taters if i'm just fixing a little bit i fix almost a whole bag mine's just a couple so if it's not a whole lot, I only use half a stick. If it's a whole lot, I use a stick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down and cut it, like slice it, so that the slices are already pre-sliced. My pretty little marble knives Shane got me. Do it like that and just slice it so it's already ready to go. A lot of people wait till their haters get cool, but I learned that if you do it while they're hot, that the butter melts better and blends better. The reason I learned that is because I got impatient one day and just wanted to do it like right off the bat and they were hot and it just blended a lot better. <laughs> Y'all ready? This is wild, man. Okay, we're gonna turn it on low, okay? And then while it's going, I'm going to, this is not a tutorial by the way, I'm going to put a little bit of salt. You wanna go the whole perimeter. I wanna go the whole perimeter. <laughs> then I'm gonna start tossing in the butter one block two block and where it's hot it's gonna start melting and blending it three block four block five block six block seven block eight block nine block ten blocks and then little by little we're just gonna do a of milk did y'all see that clearly uh of milk. That's my third clip. Now that the taters are kind of mushed and combined, they won't go flying everywhere so you can up the speed. Don't ever start it high off the bat because I had a whole kitchen covered in taters one day by doing that because you don't get on mush so you literally just put it's like zero to a hundred and the taters just go everywhere. You're playing dodgeball with bolt taters and that's not fun. I was literally cleaning off bolt taters off of random stuff for like three months. There's my fourth book. Did you see it? Let's go up another notch. Let's go in with the salt. Another notch. Woo. Fifth book. They're looking good. And that's about the consistency we like ours. So I probably won't add any more milk. This is the face of 7 a.m. Marina who forgot to do an outro. <laughs> It's posting day. <laughs> I need to do an outro. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning or not. Whatever it is, wherever you're at, know that I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later.